Awesome. Yay. All right, it's super exciting to be the first session of the day here. So, so really happy to be at this conference where we don't really need to send, sell you on the 3D vision, right? Like you, you all know that, that it's great. It's great to have 3D worlds. Um, so it's, it's great to be in one place. And I would love to introduce you to Microsoft Mesh, where you can create fully customized multi-user 3D solutions for your company. So I hope that in this presentation, you can learn how to build for Mesh. You can learn the challenges that Mesh addresses and, and how you can bring that home with you and start developing for Mesh as well. Now, I just want to read the room really quickly. Who all has heard of Microsoft Mesh? Oh, awesome. Good set of hands. So not really too much of an introduction. And who all has developed for Microsoft Mesh? I see. I know I know two folks here that definitely do. Great, cool, great to see a couple of hands. Awesome, so uh, like Megan mentioned, I'm Mega Sharma. Um, I am a product manager on the Mesh developer platform team. I've, I've done that for two years, so hopefully I should know what I'm talking about. And like I mentioned, Mesh is a relatively new product. So anything that you really like that you hear in this presentation, let me know. Anything that you don't like, also let me know. We have room to change it. So uh, it would, would be great to get your feedback as well. Awesome, and I'm going to let this video do a bit of an introduction for me because it has a great soundtrack, so it might get some energy up too. Sometimes hybrid meetings can feel a little impersonal. Hello? Avatars for Microsoft Teams gives people the choice to show up how they want, helping them feel more comfortable and included. But can we take digital presence a step further? Just a minute. Immersive spaces for teams help interactions feel more engaging, more connected, and more natural. Great job, Miriam. Yeah, nice presentation. But what if we could take it even further by building a custom immersive experience just for your organization? Microsoft Mesh elevates orientations, trainings, and employee experiences by transcending time and space. No matter where you are, you can come together in one place. Connect like never before with Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Mesh. Awesome. I did see some heads nodding, so we did like the soundtrack. Um, so as you can see in that video, you could jump into the same experience in the same meeting on both PC and MetaQuest VR headset. We also have support for Apple Vision Pro in the coming year. And something that we guarantee with our different endpoints is you get the same experience. So you'll get the same interactivity and you'll get to be involved in the same 3D world no matter what endpoint you're, you're entering with. Great, so that video was a good introduction to Mesh, but I would like to delve a little bit deeper into the different experiences that Mesh enables. So who here can get kind of tired of staring at your own camera reflection when you're on a video call? Okay, a couple of folks. I thought it'd be more, um, but you can. <laughs> We, we enable a different uh, type of presence with avatars and teams. So you can actually enter a Teams meeting with an avatar like this. And then if you also get tired of being in 2D all day long, which maybe some folks here aren't because we're lucky to be in the 3D space, but you can easily transform your existing 2D Teams meeting into an immersive meeting with immersive spaces and teams. And we have a few out-of-box environments and meeting spaces to just jump into and, and test it out. So that's all in Teams, but you also are able to host events and customize your experiences with Microsoft Mesh, and that's packaged in Teams Premium, and that's what we're going to be getting into uh, for most of this presentation today. So customers are already starting to revolutionize work with Mesh, and here's just a few scenarios that we're really seeing Mesh being great for. So we have all hands meetings where you can get a lot of people together um, in a 3D space and be able to engage and have a sense of co-presence. And then we have new employee onboarding, which really, as you can imagine, would increase learning for a new employee and also excitement for a new employee when they're joining a company and can be guided through a 3D space, especially since a lot of onboardings are remote and, and in 2D now, which can be a little bit draining. Um, and then we have training and guided tours and demos, which as you can imagine, if you are able to take people to a place that they're not usually able to get to or a place that doesn't even exist and you can change things like time and space to convey a story, 
that really changes the game for training and guided tours. So we're seeing a lot of traction there as well. And then maybe topping all of that list is the social presence that you get to feel with social gatherings. When you're able to make eye contact with someone, when you're able to be in a space, be able to have side conversations, that really helps facilitate that human connection that we sometimes miss in remote work too. And maybe topping all of that, depending on, on what you're going for, is the budget that you can save as well uh, when you can kind of cut back on travel and being able to be in places in 3D worlds. So what I want to point out before getting into the details of building a, a, in, in Mesh, you are building on a trusted platform and that is guaranteed. So we are not a standalone product, we are part of M365, so that means you're guaranteed the same compliance, security, and, and privacy that all M365 products are known for and are built on. And we're also built on an industry-leading real-time communications infrastructure, which is Microsoft Teams, which has hundreds of millions of users a month already. And you're able to uh, have robust IT admin management of user and company data and integrate seamlessly with existing identity systems like Microsoft Entra and other productivity tools. Now, the reason that I want to call that out is, is we've heard a lot of developers that make these 3D concepts for companies, and, and they love them, and it, and it proves the point, and it's great. Uh, but sometimes they're not able to successfully roll out because of a company's privacy or security issue. So we kind of solve for those things with uh, building on Microsoft. And we have a couple of capabilities that we easily solve for right out of the box. Um, one of those is our avatar system. You can see in this video here, you can customize for different outfits and show up to a meeting as your best self. These are the avatars that are managed by an ID system. So that meeting, the, the, the 2D picture that you saw where you can enter as an avatar in a Teams meeting, you can bring that same avatar in 3D form to your immersive space and to your mesh world as well. And then we have spatial audio, which we've invested into heavily with Mesh. It's super important. Um, you're able to have side conversations. It's, it's a really great way uh, to, make you, to make you feel like you're in a real life world. You know, you can't, you can't have a side conversation in a 2D, in a 2D meeting. It's just going to be the main conversation. Everyone can hear it. But in a Mesh world, you can kind of spread out and utilize spatial audio to feel more natural and connected. And then we, Mesh is by default for multi-user, so there is synchronization across users. Everything that's done in the event can be seen by everyone, including physics, and I'll get into that um, as well. And this, for fun, is my avatar right now. I matched it to my outfit currently. <laughs> And a couple of things that you get on the event production site, uh, an event production field with no code or orchestration is one, you can just schedule with Outlook. So people are just able to jump into a meeting from a regular Outlook invite. So there's not really a lot of friction there. And then we have mirrored rooms for scalability if you want to have uh, like 200 person events. So there's 16 people that can join per room and then those are mirrored. So you can have really large events that way. And then we have a rich set of customization tools. So let's say you pass off a 3D world to a company or your company already has that, but then you want to brand that with images and videos. You don't want to redesign the world all the time and, and jump into to Unity and to develop that again. So we have customization tools that allow you to add images, videos, and screen share before the event actually starts. And then a rich set of host tools that your, your producer can use or host can, an event organizer can use to like play and stop those videos, um, to enable different to enable different event loops to really bring that event to life as well. And, and it all kind of is a seamless process to actually host an event in that mesh world. And you can save all of these customizations as templates as well. One thing I want to call out, we have a super large set of um, customization and host tools, but one thing I want to call out for a developer audience is how easily you can customize your event with action groups. So you can trigger multiple content changes like images and videos you can see here. That cozy fireplace just got hidden. And let's say we want to get the party started, you can start this celebration action group, which will come up in just a second. There we go. Um, uh, we have our balloons. We have a countdown timer. There's also some audio associated with it. So you can easily just switch up the vibe in your event as well, which makes it really great in real time. And this is a little bit of a sneak peek treat for you all. Uh, we are, this is currently in development, but we are working on generating environments with AI. So you can see this would be one of our out of the box environments that you just get. Um, and you can customize your environment. For example, I want to create this modern meeting space for eight people in the fall season. So you can see we have our like red autumnal trees and then the seating changes and colors change. That's something that's in development, but we're, we're investing into that space as well. 
So I know we are a developer audience here, so let's look under the hood and how you can build with Mesh Toolkit. We've really built the Mesh Toolkit in a way that will support you through the entire development process. You can see big picture here. We have tools to help you design with graphic tools, tools to help enhance your environment with bringing in web content, interactables, physics, and audio zones. And then you can script scene logic and make those events more, um, sorry, environments more complex as well and optimize your environments with tools like the emulator, content performance analyzer, and then it's an easy publish process. And I'm about to take you all through that and show you some demos as well, so you can see how easy it is to do these things. Now, first off, I know a couple of folks in the room were familiar with Mesh and have developed with Mesh, but we are using Unity, which is a, a 3D developer standard. So you are, would be able to develop with familiar 3D tools, um, a quick learning curve there. And part of that, uh, part of investing into Unity also means that the assets that you can create with other 3D modeling tools like Blender, Maya, Houdini, et cetera, you would be able to leverage those existing Unity scenes and assets. It's really not that hard to turn what you already have in Unity and, and bring that right into the Mesh experience. And we also have a great library of samples, which I'll get into a little bit more later. Um, we've, we've really invested in our developer documentation. Uh, we have a Mesh 101 sample that gets you started and pretty much just teaches you how to meshify an environment that you already have in Unity. We might actually handhold too much, but we just want to make sure that everybody can get productive as soon as possible when you start exploring with Mesh. So to start off with graphic tools, it is a set of scripts, shaders, and assets that allow you to build these environments and design them in a performant way to fit in your performance budgets. So you can see some examples here. And we also provide the 3D UI that's part of the mesh design language if you want to make your uh, mesh experiences coherent as well. So lots of options for, for designers to get started with the graphic tools that just come with the toolkit. And then you can also enhance productivity by bringing in a web slate. So what is a web slate? A web slate enables you to bring everyday apps and information uh, in, from 2D into your 3D world. And an M365 app integration is coming soon as well. So you can use maps, diagrams, and data and make that all interactive in your 3D world pretty easily. And I will show you how easy that is to do with this video. So you can see I'm just dragging and dropping this web slate prefab into Unity. And then when I click on that web slate, you can see that I have an option to change the link. We always default to the Microsoft homepage URL, but I want to display this Power BI dashboard and supplier quality analysis here, so I have my Power BI. And we've also designed web slates with security in mind to prevent any malicious redirects or any changes to the experience. So I'm allowing the domain for um, Power BI right now in this step. So that ensures a secure experience. And then we can quickly change the positions and customize it to, you know, and scale it to wherever you want it to be. You can make it a really large web slate of a social media feed or just uh, make it like a panel like so. And then here in play mode, I see my dashboard. It's loaded in, and this is all in Unity. I'm able to test that out. And then web slates are also scriptable with visual scripting. You can see that down there. Um, and you can load offline files with the toggle of a button. And so it's, it's really easy to make that content come to life as well. And then we have my personal favorite part of the Mesh Toolkit, which is Mesh Physics. Now, Mesh Physics changes the game in enabling you to tell stories. When you can change things like throwability, gravity, buoyancy, you can take people to realistic environments, you can take people to fantastic environments, um, and, and Mesh Physics enables telling all of those stories. So we support all of the features that come with Unity Physics, and you can imagine that might get quite complex. So we can integrate with visual scripting as well. Um, so in a no-code way, you can enable physics animations and triggers. And there is no server logic needed. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer synchronization is handled, which means that it, all low latency synchronization is handled as well. So if you have any late joiners, which is good for someone like me, and if you have any network issues, that is all handled on the physics side. It's not just going to break the whole experience um, if one of those issues comes up. And then physics was built with uh, compression or transform compressions and C++ um, efficiency. So CPU is minimally impacted as well as bandwidth. So you're able to do a lot here. 
And in tandem with that is the power of interactivity that you can leverage with interactables. This is something we're also investing into so that you can create realistic environments. You can see these are examples of our equipable objects in our samples library. You can see someone can hold a wand, uh, hold a mug, a trophy, and then there we have drills so that could leverage well for a training scenario as well. So we want to highlight the power of combining interactivity, community, and eventually data-driven enterprise tools as well. And here I want to show you how easy it is to just make something grabbable and releasable. So I have my wind turbine here. Um, this is our Mesh 101 sample. It's all about wind turbines. You'll see it a lot. And if you add my Mesh interactable setup to this 3D object and just click manipulable, that's all you need to do to make an object grabbable and releasable. But let's say I want to use scripting here to actually create an animation. So in this case, I want to bring my wind turbine into this bounding box and have those blades spin. So that's just a regular Unity animation that I have. And in visual scripting, in this no-code way, I'm able to set that, uh, set that box volume as a trigger. And you'll see this all come together very quickly in our mesh emulator. So there we go. I'm able to pick up that wind turbine bring it into this box here and you see those blades are spinning right there. Now, this is a really key part of Mesh as well, is where you can make your environments a little bit more complex and bring in scene logic. And you have options in how you want to script your scene logic as well. So we have visual scripting, which runs client side and it doesn't it doesn't uh, require any code at all. It kind of mirrors Unity visual scripting, so there's an eloquence in that. And you can just do simple scene logic, like um, triggered certain game objects. You can make something shared or local, control those behaviors. We have all these nodes that make it really easy to, to create these interactions. And then we have cloud scripting. Now, oops, sorry. Let's go back. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we have cloud scripting, which runs in Azure, which means it's secure, which basically you can write any .NET apps with C Sharp and you can call NuGet libraries, you can call um, any .NET APIs. So you're able, to, uh, you're able to bring in your complex business logic and backend data in a secure way. And that automatically syncs across clients as well. Now, what's great here, you know, you have your simplicity with visual scripting, you have your complexity with cloud scripting, but these two are better together and you can use them in combination in your environment as well. So think scenarios like, let's say I have a data set of temperatures and then I have a digital twin and I want something to glow red and, and light up or something uh, based off of a temperature that goes too high. Um, that's where visual scripting and cloud scripting can work together in, in a way that you can easily develop that by doing the animations with visual scripting and enabling that live backend data with cloud scripting. So this really kind of changes the way that data can be visualized. It changes the way that you can bring in data to your digital twins and empower those types of scenarios. And of course, we have to sprinkle a little bit of AI into everything these days. And so here is our Mesh 201 sample. Um, essentially, we're kind of operating on the same concept of BYOD, which here means bring your own data, and then BYOAI, so you can bring your own AI. It's extensible as well. So you can see here, we have a globe that's connected to a public weather API with cloud scripting. And then I also, let's say I want to reason over this data with a bit of help from AI in a mesh experience. This is my C sharp file that you can see here has a few lines of code that actually call um, GPT turbo here. And then we are able to deploy that and, and control sort of our user interaction in the mesh experience. And then there's just a couple of lines here that tell our assistant what to do. Like, I'm telling it it's a helpful assistant. I'm telling it to keep its responses short um, when I'm in a 3D world. I'm telling it what the scene is about, and I'm telling it to help me use historical and current weather data as well. And you can see here, oh, sorry. Ah, I want to show you all how that looks in mesh. There we go.
Okay, sorry about that. It's not letting me skip forward in the video. Maybe I can play that later for you all if we have a few minutes. But essentially, I'm able to be in this experience and connect to an Azure OpenAI chatbot and ask it questions like what I'm looking at. And it tells me what I'm looking at. It tells me I'm looking at a 3D model of Earth. It tells me what data is used to inform the scenario. So you can add all of that with your specific business context as well. And then another pain point that it solves um, is, is being able to reason over large amounts of data. So I can ask it a question like, where should I build this wind farm? And out of those three locations, it'll pick one based off of current trends and historical trends as well, which I wouldn't be able to see in the moment. So AI and Mesh solves for being able to onboard people into new experiences because AI is just better in Mesh because spatial context is inherent in Mesh. So all a developer really needs is to bring in your chatbot and be able to add in spatial context for your 3D world to enable a great chatbot experience. And so let's say our environment is all done now. We have scripted our scene logic. We've added physics. We've made it interactive. How do we optimize with performance tools? I know for a lot of us, we, we work with a lot of polygons. So these tools are really lifesavers when you're, when you're trying to stay within your performance budget. One, you can uh, see the actual multi-user interactions in the Mesh emulator. And then the performance profiler shows you things like GPU and frames per second in real time. And our content performance analyzer is a real lifesaver here. You can see here, I have two different warnings. And then all I need to do is press fix issue and that will be magically solved in my scene. Uh, so, so really a lifesaver tool. And we also have a straightforward publishing process as well. So you don't need any third party tools or anything. This is all part of the Mesh Toolkit. Here's our uploader. I'm giving my sample a name that I want to upload and describing it as an interactive environment about wind turbines. And then publishing it to a collection in our Mesh portal. So our environment is created here. And then all I need to do is select the scene from Unity. And then we can build for either Windows or a VR headset. In this case, we're building for both. And then we're building and publishing. Um, not to false advertise, I definitely sped up that video there. It takes a little bit longer than that to actually build and publish. Uh, it would take like probably half of this session, which is not so bad, not the full session. Um, so there we go. We have our successful build and publishes, and we'd be able to see that experience in our mesh world. So I've walked you through this end-to-end -end developer cycle and shown you how easy it is to bring this content to life with Mesh. And hopefully you all now would love to get started with Mesh if you haven't already. If you'd like to check out other development resources and tools, please go to aka.ms slash meshcreator. And this video here is just a library uh, or a video showing our library of samples. So there's our Mesh 101 environment that shows you all the basics and how to meshify your environment from Unity. And then we have our toy box environment, which has all these interactive games and social activities. And that uh, might delight you all. It it's, comes as a package. So you can import those activities into your custom environments as well um, as little customer delighters. And there you go, our little wand flickering, our drill going. These are our equipable objects that I was showing you earlier. And then we have our physics effects gallery. Like I mentioned, we have a lot of physics effects. Um, and these show how great these effects are individually and in combination. So you can also, you can learn from these. Um, it's designed more of a learning space. And you can also pull those into your environment as well. And then yes, we did make a physics museum to teach you about mesh physics. So we put all of these things together into an environment so you can see things like gravity. Um, we have explosions and triggers in this building as well and it kind of comes together. And there's our buoyancy in action as well. But yeah, you can get all of that and more if you go to aka.ms slash mesh creator. We also have a ton of developer docs to get you started as well. So you can start building with the toolkit right away. If you do want to create a mesh event and if you do want all of the things that come out of the box, um, you do need a uh, premium license. You can find out more about licensing on our homepage. But we do offer a six month free trial. Like I mentioned, your feedback is super valuable for, at this point, uh, for us at this point in our early stages. And we just love to get you all going in mesh and, and answer any questions that you might have. All right, so thank you. Let's do this. If you have any questions or if you want a demo, uh, we are in the exhibit space demoing with Meta. And you can also meet me in the Mesh private room, which is PR6. Um, it's kind of behind that exhibit space uh, from 2 to 2.45 2 2 PM. This session was supposed to uh, be 1.30 to 2. I'm glad you all could still make it with that, uh, with that time change. But yeah, that will be 2 to 2.45. I'll be in the room if you have any questions, if you want any demos at all.
yeah, we, I'll see you there. Thank you all so much for listening.